Good morning, mathematicians. We're looking at our Tuesday column here. We are to write a multiplication sentence to find the volume of the below shape. So we are going to use our length times width times height. So we know that we have 12 times 5 times 5, but we do need to find out what that equals to make a true multiplication sentence. I know that 12 times 5 is 60. So really, I need to now multiply 60 by 5, but I can use my basic practice zero trick for that. 6 times 5 is 30. And then how many? Here's that 6 times 5 equals 30. I'm boxing it because I don't want us to fall into that misconception and think that this zero is this zero. No, the 6 times 5 gave me 30. This zero is for my basic fact. But now I have an extra zero that was outside the basic fact. That tells me that my answer here is actually 300. Now, don't forget, I do need to stop and think, 300 what? Since this is volume, I'm going to include the unit, which in this case is feet, and I'm going to include my tiny three to show that that is 300 feet cubed. That is the answer to our first question in our month or in our Tuesday column. Now we're thinking about Denzel washing tubs. So block is six units tall, three units long, and three units wide. How many total soap cubes are in Denzel, Denzel's tub-shaped block? So boys and girls, I have my length, my width, and my height right here at this important moment in this sentence, and I need to multiply those together to get to my overall answer. Well, I know that I have six times three times three, I know that because really that's what that volume is going to equal, length times width times height, right? Well, really this is like six times nine, which is a basic fact we've memorized. So we know that we are really looking at 54 and it's going to be 54 units cubed. They did not tell us the specific unit. When they don't tell you the specific unit, like centimeter or meter or inch, we just say unit, but don't forget the tiny three to show that that is cubed. Our next question is asking us to divide, but we can use any of our methods that we would like to solve. I'm going to solve this with partial function because certainly we've done a couple other methods recently on our Skyrim review. So let's go back to this one. Here I have 8,000. 547. That's going to be broken up into seven groups. So how much would I start with dividing into the groups? Let's start with a thousand groups of seven. A thousand groups of seven is going to use up 7,000 of that. That is a very good first take because look how much of that number we have already used up. Now what could I do to distribute this number into seven groups further? I'm going to take 200 and put it into each of the seven groups. That would use up how much? Well, 2 times 7 is 14, and there are two zeros outside that basic fact. So I have 1,000, or excuse me, just 147 left still to sort. Okay, let's go ahead and take 20 and put it in each of the seven groups. 20 times 7 is 140, right? It's 2 times 7 is 14, and one zero outside the basic fact. Now I only have seven left over. Well, that tells me I could put one more into each of the seven groups, and one times seven is seven, so really I now know that I have no remainder. I look over here and add these values together to really see how much ends each of the seven groups. We have 1,221. I'm going to write that on the top, 1,221, because again, especially with illustrative math, sometimes these partial quotients are written on the top. I like to write them on the side so that they're like a running record on the side, but in any case, we're going to arrive at the same answer. Our answer here to this question is going to be 1,000. 221. Okay? Our last question today, boys and girls, helps us reflect back 
on symmetry. Half of the figure below has been drawn. Use the line of symmetry shown by the dashed line to complete the figure. So we're imagining this line is like a mirror. We want to see this side and this side being precisely, exactly the same. So I'm going to ask myself from here, I traveled left to units. So on this side, I'm going to, and let me switch to a different color so we'll see it out a little better. Here, I'm going to travel right to units. From here, I travel down to units. So here, I will also travel down to units. Here, I traveled over to units and then down to units. So we're going to do just the same here. Over here, I went back into units. So I'm going to go back into units. Here I went down two units, so I should go down two units, and then I'm going to go into units to connect back my shape. Okay, so certainly, boys and girls, this is practicing a line of symmetry. And we have one more question. It does say, "What is the area of the above figure? How many square units? Area is counting how many squares are inside the shape. So here we have." One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's come up here to this part. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So how many individual squares are inside of this shape? Well, there are 32. And we make sure we always report area in square units but that was already written for us. So we have now finished our two 